In today's lesson, we will be looking at grade 12 chemical equilibrium using the awesome FET simulations. We define chemical equilibrium as a state during a reversible reaction when the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. To look into this, we use this reversible reactions simulation. In this simulation, we have a hypothetical reaction having A on the left of this container representing the reactants of this reaction and we have this B in red molecules representing the products formed on the right hand side of the container. At the top right of the page, here you have the number of molecules in the chamber where you can adjust the number of both A and B in the container. Then we have the temperature of new particles measured in kelvins. We have the default setting at 300 kelvins. Then at the bottom here we have options for showing species information, which brings up this gas properties box, showing you not only the number of gas molecules, but also the average speed of both the respective molecules A and B in meters per second. Then we can choose to show this energy histogram showing both the number of particles versus kinetic energy and the number of particles versus speed. The important thing to note with both these graphs is, of course there is a directly proportional relationship between an object's kinetic energy and its speed. The higher an object's kinetic energy, the higher its speed and velocity. Then at the bottom here, we have the heat control where you can choose to add the heat or remove the heat by simply sliding up or down accordingly. Then we can click here to pause or start the simulation. Then the step button. On the right here, we have the start, reset and this seconds count that serves the function of a stopwatch for our investigations. Then we also have this reset button which works to reset everything and start everything from scratch as you can see. As mentioned, we define chemical equilibrium as a state during a reversible reaction when the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. To illustrate this, let's first look at what happens when I add about 200 molecules of A. Firstly, we see on both these graphs how the number of particles immediately increases sharply and the kinetic energy and molecule speed also increases gradually. Remember how according to the collision theory, for these reactants to react and form products, they firstly have to collide with each other and the collisions with the correct orientation and the sufficient energy to overcome the activation energy. You can think of the activation energy as this part of this curve right here. These effective collisions will determine the rate of this chemical reaction. The higher the number of these effective collisions, the faster the rate of this forward reaction. Forward because, as you can see, at this point A is on the left of our container, which indicates the reactants on the left as we will also represent it in a written chemical reaction. This A is forming B on the right hand side of the container and therefore forming the products of this forward reaction. However, since this is a reversible reaction, you will also see how these B molecules can also collide then react to form back this A, in which case the B molecule would represent the reactants and the A molecule would represent the product of this reversible reaction. So for the forward reaction, these A molecules are forming B, while for the reverse reaction, the B molecules are forming back the A molecules. The size of A at the top here also increases relative to this B, which serves as a representation of the various quantities of A and B in the container. Another important thing to point out is this thermometer right here, which measures the overall temperature of the contents of the container. So the reaction will continue until equilibrium is reached. So the rate of the forward reaction simply refers to the rate at which these A molecules form these B molecules. And the rate of the reverse reaction refers to the rate at which these B molecules form back the A molecules. So again, 
Chemical equilibrium in this reaction will be reached when the rate at which these two reactions, the forward and the reverse reactions, are the same. And this is not referring to the actual amount of A being equal to the amount of B present in the container. However, it is referring to the rate of production of these two, the A and the B molecules. And when the rate of production of these two is the same, the rate of the forward reaction being equal to the rate of the reverse reaction, then at this point, the reaction has reached equilibrium. To calculate the equilibrium constant Kc, we have to use the equation Kc is equal to the product of the product's concentrations to the powers of their molar coefficients, or divided by the product of the reactant's concentrations to the powers of their molar coefficients. So basically, we have to consider the amount of the reactants and the products present in the container when equilibrium is reached. Then calculate their concentrations. So, for example, in this case, we'd have to firstly work out the number of moles using the equation. The number of moles is equal to N divided by Na, where N is equal to the number of molecules present in the container, and Na is the Avogadro's constant, which is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the power of 24. Then we can find the concentrations using the concentration is equal to N divided by V, where N is now equal to the number of moles and V is equal to the container's volume. And we can then calculate the Kc value for the reaction since we'd be having the concentrations of the products and the reactants at equilibrium. Once again, Kc will be equal to the product of the product's concentrations to the powers of their molar coefficients all divided by the product of the reactants' concentrations to the powers of their molar coefficients. Remember, you can also be required to interpret various Kc values. And the important thing to remember is, when the Kc value is greater than 1, then it means the forward reaction is favored. And when the Kc value is less than 1, it means the reverse reaction is favored. There are three factors that affect chemical equilibrium, namely the temperature, concentration, and pressure. We use Le Chatelier's principle to help us understand how each one of these factors will affect reactions in equilibrium. Le Chatelier's principle states, when the equilibrium in a closed system is disturbed, the system will reinstate a new equilibrium by favoring the reaction that will oppose the disturbance. So if any of the conditions that affect equilibrium, which are once again the temperature, concentration of liquids, and the pressure of gases are changed, the forward or the reverse reactions will be favored, which simply means the forward or the reverse reactions will occur faster until a new equilibrium is established. We will use this simulation to investigate how these three factors the temperature, concentration, and pressure affects reactions in a state of equilibrium. Starting with the temperature, to investigate the effects of an increase in temperature, we'd have to firstly consider whether the reaction is endothermic, which simply means the products have a higher energy potential compared to the reactants, like in this example, or whether the reaction is exothermic, which means the energy potential of the products is lower than the energy potential of the reactants. To illustrate this, I will start by increasing the temperature for this endothermic reaction, which is once again endothermic since the products B clearly have a higher energy potential compared to the reactants A. In such endothermic reactions, an increase in temperature favors the forward reaction which then absorbs the applied energy and produces more products. As I increase the temperature, note how the number of molecules of B increases until a new equilibrium is established. Similarly, now if we consider the effects of an increase in the concentration of A, if A is a liquid, or an increase in the pressure if A was a gas. An increase in A will also similarly favor the forward reaction that uses up the reactants and forms more products. 
A decrease in temperature favors the exothermic reaction which releases the energy and thus counteracts the drop in temperature. And a decrease in the reactant's concentration or an increase in the product concentration also favors the reverse reaction that decomposes the products to form back the reactants.